I have a really amazing podcast episode today. I uh, will be talking with Kunal Kushwaha. He cracked his GSOC in the first year of college itself. And in this episode, he'll just be talking about the complete process. What was his uh, preparation like? What was the mindset that is required to crack GSOC? Uh, just uh, some tips for all of you that want to crack GSOC right now. Uh, in this year, if you don't know what GSOC is, GSOC is an open source event that is organized by Google, inside of which a lot of open source organizations take part. And they want people like us to add some features to their projects. Okay, and when we do that, we end up getting a lot of swags, uh, a lot of like compensation and all that. So that is a really amazing, uh, you know, experience of participating in GSOC. Um, and so yeah, I hope you will learn a lot from this episode. Make sure that you watch it till the very end. Subscribe to the channel, like this video. Also guys, uh, Kunal has his own YouTube channel called Code for Cause. I link it in the description. Do subscribe to it if you want to learn coding. He has a really amazing machine learning bootcamp where he just talks from the basics of machine learning, the mathematics that is required, all the way to uh, the intermediate and advanced concepts of machine learning uh, he has discussed in that bootcamp. So if you're interested, you should definitely check that one out as well. I'll link it in the description. So yeah, now let's get started with the podcast episode. Hey Kunal, thank you so much for joining me here for this podcast interview. First of all, you've done so much amazing things that I went through your LinkedIn profile and it's just uh, really amazing, like packed with, you know, you did this and then you you, you uh, did GSOC as well, which we'll be talking about in this video. So like, uh, how are you doing there, bro? Really excited to talk to you. I'm doing good. Yeah. First of all, thanks for having me, Sean. I'm really glad to be over here and uh, really lo- love the amazing work that you're doing for the community. And uh, that is what we all are working towards, whoever is, you know, helping the community. So yeah. we are all working towards the same goal and I'm really excited to be here. Exactly. And uh, yeah, th- how, how I did it, that's a good question. Basically, uh, I, f- I personally focus on a pie-shaped learning experience. So there's a quote that I really like, um, know everything about something and something about everything. Okay. Um, so, you know, exploring when, when you're in your initial years of college. So you're talking about GSOC and open source. So I mm-hmm. started open source in my freshman year itself because I wanted real world experience. So it's like, don't get stuck in a learning, learning loop. Okay. Some people are like, let me just first learn and then I'll apply it. Let me first learn and then I'll apply it. Yeah. Don't get stuck in a learning loop. Uh, even if you know, like 20 or even 30% of the tech stack that has been mentioned in the project or any open source organization. So go out there, feel free uh, to get your hands dirty, uh, explore, build things, you know, meet people. That's yeah. how, uh, that ha- that has been my journey so far in short. Awesome, bro. First of all, uh, what was your GSOC journey? Like, how did you uh, get to know about what GSOC is? And then how was your preparation journey like? How did you apply? I want to know the complete story about that. Okay, so I started, um, I started coding right from my first semester itself. I was in like a, you know, people are like, uh, I've been coding since I was at the age of 13 or things like that. So <laughs> nothing like that happened with me. Yeah. I started in my first semester. And uh, when my first semester got over, I knew like basics like Java and Python, nothing high tech in development or anything like that. So what I lacked was the real world experience. So I was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm using Java. I really like Java. But I haven't really made anything with Java. I know DSL Go, but how am I going to showcase that to other people? Mm-hmm. You know, so I was like, okay, I need some real world experience. And uh, that's when the you know community came in because I was uh, attending a lot of events. You know, uh, you're, you're from Goa, right? Uh, uh, my college is in Goa. Currently, I'm living in Mumbai. Oh, yeah. So, you know, as, as being an active member in the community, there are like so many, uh, there's a TensorFlow group, you know, Google developer cir- yeah. groups, uh, Facebook circles. So all these people, uh, you know, they were holding many, many events. Uh, now there are not many, uh, you know, in-person events, but back in that time, uh, I'm saying back in that time, like it's been <laughs> a long time. But okay. It really I feels been, like that. It has been such a, such yeah, a, such a long time. Yeah. I, have, I have been inside for like five months. So, yeah. <laughs> It's basically like, like an instinct. So that's when I found out about, you know, open source by networking with people. So they were like, Hey, you should, you know, try open source uh, software development and uh, GSOC itself is like, you know, such a big craze, especially among Indian college, Indian college students, um, because the perks are really good and things like that. But, uh, when I first started contributing, I did not even know about GSOC. Okay. I just knew about open source and to answer your question, I got to know about GSOC after I knew about open source. So, okay. 
was uh, the main motivation behind um, you know me contributing to open source was getting that real world experience and engaging with the community so the projects i you know found out were like uh, there was this uh, kubernetes client for java by red hat so a freshman uh, looking at project related to kubernetes client kubernetes like two uh, isn't it like two yeah. high level like yeah that's what i thought at first but you know there there are contributing to open source is a beginner there's like a few steps so the first one is obviously uh, engage with the community you are going to get stuck if you are such a newbie so who is going to help you if you get stuck well the community members are going to help you the people who created that project are going to help you so i was like hey i'm really interested in this project but i don't know shit about <laughs> kubernetes and docker can you point me in the right direction and they were like okay first learn docker you know uh, dockerize your own personal projects then learn about kids things like that so that's when i started and they then you can also you know um, a good way to start is improving their documentation writing blogs okay. for them because the first any commits, open source right? yeah so the any open source program pro, organization one thing that they cannot get enough of is documentation so okay. documentation is always welcome and uh, it's also a really good way to start you know in your journey into an organization so then that comes your uh, solving beginner friendly issues now this can be anything for me it was adding spaces between if statements uh so yeah it doesn't matter so like you it just you just kept pressing enter enter but yeah i i wrote a script but uh, that messed up a lot of things okay so i just did it like refactoring so yeah okay uh that's what i did and uh, after doing all these things that's when i got to know about gsoc so okay that's when my community members say hey you you are you know active in the community uh, you should apply for gsoc and i was like okay so i applied i saw about gsoc i was like okay it's really competitive people you know i saw these youtube videos and things like that so i was like okay it's really competitive doesn't matter i will apply this year i'm in my first year right now if i don't get selected doesn't matter because i'll still keep contributing that was my plan and then when i apply next year so these you know the the members are going to be like hey this this guy came last year he didn't get selected but he was still contributing so we should select him this year so mm-hmm. i was like okay if i don't get selected i'm pretty sure that i would get selected when i will be coming in my second year okay so that was the motivation behind you know applying so, so, to gsoc so just so that i'm 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 hearing it correctly you first of all entered the red hat organization and you had no idea about gsoc and you were just uh, yeah. contributing to their source code and then after yeah. some time they were like hey we are also a gsoc organization you might as well just yeah gsoc yeah i met That's the org admin at a, yeah i met the org admin of uh, red hat um, j boss which is the name of the organization by red hat yeah. so he told, they told me about you know uh, open source programs and things like that so there was this program google code in which is now over but uh, it was a program for high school students to get started with open source and then we found out about gsoc and outreach and other things like that so i was contributing to open source before that uh, my most newbiest contribution in open source i mean everyone knows about hacktoberfest yeah. so uh, that is the first one uh, i mean it was productive because uh, i got to know how to use git and github so mm-hmm. that was good but uh, then i found out about you know gsoc and i applied with the motivation of you know okay if it happens it happens if it doesn't happen then i'll apply next year and this was, was in your uh, but, second year or first year my first year i did okay. my gsoc in my first year okay all right and then what would be your tips for people that are, that are just thinking about gsoc because like most people think of gsoc for the monetary value and for the mm-hmm. for the tag that it would bring so uh, like yeah. if when people are starting out is it is it possible for a person who has no experience uh, and is entering into college to crack it in the first year itself because like this is one question that i used to ask my seniors as well because when i was in first year i, I again like just like you i learned about python i learned about machine learning algorithms started making some models so i was like hey this seems uh, something cool that i would want to uh, you know get into this so i just reached out to my seniors and they were like i don't think that it is possible for a first year student to actually crack it so that was something that was demotivating me what do you think about this yeah i mean look you can look at me i'm i, I did it my first year <laughs> yeah. I, i i only knew java and the organization was also really good red hat i mean uh, so uh, i mean Uh, people only tell you that you know you can't do something when they can't do it so uh, just you know uh, 
opinions are okay. I mean, everyone has their different opinion, but yeah. what's also true is that every person has their own, you know, learning abilities and interests mm-hmm. and things like that. So if something is not working for you, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work for some someone else. So talk, t- taking about uh, talking about your question about, you know, doing these GSOC and all these things in your first year. Um, well, I would say um, it's good to start early. So it's not like because whom are they going to select? Are they going to select someone who just came like a week before the applications or someone who is contributing to like, you know, the project from the past two to three months. So mm-hmm. obviously the person who has been contributing for a really long time. I'm also not that, you know, senior in my college. I've just started my third year. Yeah. So just got done with my second year. I've just started my third year. So I'm also new in this, you know, college, college, uh, college stuff. Um, and uh, regarding, you know, if you, because I've been involved in these programs for a lo- really long time, like, a lot of programs. So I was a mentee in GSOC. Currently, I'm a mentor with the same organization, and I've been a mentor with GCI as well. So one tip that I can give the, to the viewers, if you like, definitely want to get selected. So this is sort of like a tip: um, choose a difficult project. Okay. Okay. So this is a tip. Uh, if you definitely like, okay, want to do Google Summer of Code or other things, so choose a difficult project because the more number of applications that uh, you know there are at a particular project obviously your chances are going to get reduced because there mm-hmm. are more people fighting for that particular position. And obviously in that particular case, whoever has the best contributions, you know, best engagement with the community, things like that. So that, that those students are going to get selected. But if we're talking about just, just about GSOC, uh, if you definitely like want to increase your chances and select a project that is really tough. This is, um, this is, is actually uh, unconventional advice. And, and uh, I have a yeah. senior uh, in Bits Pilani. He also cracked GSOC in, in his first year as well. And I got him on my podcast and basically yeah, he applied for that. a hyperledger uh, project. So that yeah, was yeah. also something uh, new and yeah. something difficult for a first year student. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's also a great project. I've seen that uh, blockchain one by Linux foundation. It's great. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's, it's great, you know, just uh, apply to a, di- to a difficult project. And to be honest, uh, by difficult, I don't mean necessarily that the project is like difficult to understand or work with. It's just that something that, you know, many students feel like it's overwhelming at first, uh, like Kubernetes and things like that. I also mm-hmm. felt that it was overwhelming, but when I actually learned about it, I was like, okay, I can do this. And I, I actually did that. I made pull requests, merged them, pull requests, uh, other things. So uh, it doesn't really matter that uh, it's going to be uh, I'm not saying that it's not going to be challenging. What I am saying is that it's a good thing because uh, over there you have a learning opportunity. So you are you working on a project that you know um, you have a, you don't know much about. So that is a learning opportunity for you. And those people are welcomed in the community. The people okay. who are there from a you know learning point of view. If you just showcase that okay, I want to learn. I want to contribute to this project to the community members by you know. Um, solving easy issues, attending their meetups, asking questions, uh, being active in the community. So they're going to be like, okay, yeah, this person is uh, over here to learn and uh, the chances uh, do, do increase in getting selected for the Google Summer Code because that is what the mentors look into rather than, you know, if you're just coding in isolation, working by yourself, that does not really represent uh, as a good teamwork uh, sort of thing because in open source, uh, the, the feedback, uh, giving and taking feedback is really important, especially for beginners. So, uh, if you're selecting a difficult project that you might feel that it's overwhelming, that is a good thing because you are learning something over there. All right. Now, one question that I get asked a lot is that, uh, what should be the language that I should learn first so that I can crack GSOC? And, and that person was saying that I have learned Java. Does that reduce my chances of getting uh, into GSOC? And I was like, it doesn't really matter about, it doesn't really matter. Like, what do you think about that? Okay, first of all, if you know Java, then your chances are actually increased. Uh, <laughs> so, they think that Python and JavaScript is what you need, you, you need to be knowing. Yeah, see, the thing is that uh, Python and JavaScript have a lot of projects. Yeah. Thing is that Python and JavaScripts, uh, JavaScript uh, has, you know, people are, a lot of people are learning. Okay. And most of the projects in GSOC, if you look like web development kind yeah. of projects. Hmm. So those are web development is the field that, you know, most students are comfortable with. They are like happy to do web development and generally most people are doing web development. That is a good thing. Okay. Web development, amazing field. Um, if someone is like really good at development, it's, uh, yeah. it's good, great for also you. Good for freelancing that also, and yeah, also good for freelancing, but that also means that more and more students are going to apply to those projects. Okay? Right, yeah. So, yeah. 
So talking about other projects like you know Kubernetes or uh, talking about Quarkus, which is a Java framework uh, by Red Hat, talking about uh, Knative written in Go. Okay, talking about Hyperledger, things like that, Envoy Proxy. These are like projects nobody really looks at because they don't know about that technology. Yeah. Because most students are focused towards web development, Android, mobile, uh, data success algorithms, things like mm-hmm. that. So to, to answer the question about which language is best to get selected in GSOC, uh, there's no such this thing. Is like like a, this is like language. a noob kind yeah. of a question that people ask. It's yeah. like it's kind, so kind of funny. It's not, yeah, it's, not, uh, it's a funny question, but that's okay. It's uh, understandable that students have this doubt. It's a valid question. I'm not saying it's not a valid question. It's a completely a valid question. And uh, the, the 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 thing that you need to focus on is not the you know the the language particularly itself, but what actually interests you, and you know what you like doing, and uh, the 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 learning ability. So it's not like uh, if I know a particular language, can I apply to GSOC? No. Find a particular project that you know just 20 to 30 percent about. All the other tech stack that is mentioned in this project, learn while you're contributing. All so right. even while my GSOC project was going on, I was still learning about the things. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's always going to be like, if you choose a good project for your own personal development as well, there are going to be many, many technologies that you don't know about. And that is a good thing again, because then you're getting to learn a lot of things. So yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. That was, that was really amazing. And uh, if you talk about your, uh, like you got to become GSOC mentor as well. So what was that story? Like, how did that happen? Yeah, so uh, GSOC Mentor, um, there's, there are no forms or anything for that. Yeah. It's just if you're act, if you're active in the community, if you're active if you're active in a particular project, so you just mention uh, it to your uh, GSOC uh, the the organization admin or your other uh, maintainers of the project that hey I'm active in this project, can I please like you know uh, I would like really like to uh, mentor students this year in GSOC and they send you an invite then. So uh, there's so it's more about building connections with uh, the person with your own mentor so that they can recommend you to become the mentor. Yeah, they just send you a simple invite. uh, And uh, if you're active in the community, they would not hesitate. They would Mm -hmm. send you one. And this is similarly for Google Coden as well. Google Coden is now over. Um, Okay. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the last, this was the last year for it. And now no more Google Coding, sadly. Right. But yeah, the process, I was, I was process for this was the same. Anyways. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's over now. Uh, process, is, p- 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 process was same, but uh, they, they sent out a mail that uh, they are closing Google Code in because they need to focus more on Google Summer of Code and Google Season of Talks. So these are the Season of Talks, what is that? It's, uh, it's like an open source program for people who really like uh, writing documentation. So if okay. someone is into writing documentation, so there's a program for that, uh, Google season of docs, because I just, like I mentioned at the beginning of this talk also that, you know, one thing that people cannot get enough of is documentation. So yeah. this also proves that point that, you know, Google has a separate program for that. So if anyone mm-hmm. really likes uh, contributing to the documentation of projects, then check it out. All right. So yeah, that was the episode. Uh, What do you think? How was it? Let me know in the comment section below. Also guys, the part two of this interview with Kunal is also coming soon. So stay tuned for that. We'll just be learning from him. What are the benefits of participating in open source development? And we'll be talking about major league hacking and his experience with, uh, you know, just just, uh, being in the open source community for a long, long time. If you want to connect with him, I'll leave the link to his Twitter and his LinkedIn in the description. So do check it out. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you're still watching, Thank you so, so much. And uh, yeah, I mean, like this video, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.